dolphins and ichthyosaurs, deja vu in the ocean. If you plopped a dolphin and an ichthyosaur side by side, you'd think they were cousins. Sleek torpedo-shaped bodies, fins instead of legs, long snouts full of teeth. They look like twins separated at birth. But here's the kicker. Dolphins are mammals, descended from land animals that waddled back into the sea 50 million years ago. Ichthyosaurs? They were reptiles that ruled the oceans over 200 million years ago, during the dinosaur age. They never met, never shared a family tree, and yet ended up rocking the exact same outfit. Why? Convergent evolution. If you want to move fast underwater, nature keeps coming back to the streamlined fish torpedo design. The resemblance is so uncanny that when ichthyosaur fossils were first discovered in the 1800s, people thought they were ancient dolphins. Both groups even gave birth to live young instead of laying eggs, complete with fossilized ichthyosaurs caught in the act of labor. It's like evolution beta-tested dolphins, scrapped the prototype, then re-released it with mammals. Today, dolphins leap out of waves while ichthyosaurs exist only in museums. But the ocean's deja vu design proves that when it comes to survival, copying the homework works just fine. Phytosaurs and crocodiles, swamp bosses. Crocodiles are some of Earth's most successful predators, surviving nearly unchanged for 200 million years. But rewind further to the late Triassic, and you'll find phytosaurs, swamp dwelling reptiles that looked almost identical. Long snouts, armored backs, ambush tactics in rivers, they were basically crocodile prototypes. Except, they weren't crocs at all. Phytosaurs belong to a completely different reptile group. The only giveaway? Their nostrils. Crocodiles have nostrils at the tip of their snouts. Phytosaurs had theirs way up near the eyes, like a snorkel in the wrong place. Still, they filled the same ecological niche. The swamp boss lurking in muddy waters, waiting to snap unsuspecting prey. When phytosaurs went extinct around 200 million years ago, true crocodiles showed up and said, thanks for warming the seat. To this day, crocs remain the ultimate ambush predators, outliving dinosaurs, mammals, and even human civilizations. So really, phytosaurs were crocs version 1.0, a solid idea but evolution rebooted it with a better design that's still terrifying us today. Imagine being an early amphibian. Doesn't matter which swamp you picked, odds were something croc-shaped was already waiting to ruin your day. All right, I will be posting more videos here. So slam that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. This helps us to rank better in the YouTube algorithm. Stomatosuchus and whales, the big-mouthed filter feeders. If baleen whales had a prehistoric cosplay partner, it would be Stomatosuchus. This bizarre reptile from Cretaceous Egypt was a distant relative of crocodiles. But instead of snapping jaws, it had a long, flat mouth like a giant pancake flipper. Scientists think it was a filter feeder, scooping up plankton and small fish by opening its enormous jaw and straining food out. Exactly what modern whales do with baleen plates. Sadly, the only known fossils were destroyed in World War II, so we're stuck with descriptions and drawings. But the comparisons are clear. Stomatosuchus was essentially a reptilian pre-whale, gliding through rivers and lakes with a gaping mouth built for bulk feeding. Unlike modern crocs, which chomp anything that moves, Stomatosuchus was a gentle giant, hoovering up tiny prey like a prehistoric blue whale. And here's the wild part. Filter feeding is so effective that evolution has tried it multiple times. In whales, in basking sharks, in manta rays, and here in a croc relative. Stomatosuchus might be gone, but it proves that when nature hits on a great idea, open mouth wide, eat everything small, it doesn't mind running the playbook twice. Armadillos and ankylosaurs nature's living tanks. If evolution has a favorite hobby, it's building tanks. In the Cretaceous, 
dinosaurs like ankylosaurs perfected the walking fortress design. Bony armor plates covering their backs, spikes on their sides, and even tail clubs to bash predators. Fast forward to today, and the armadillo is running the same play, but scaled down to football size. Both use osteoderms, bone deposits under the skin, as natural armor. Ankylosaurs were multi-ton beasts shrugging off T-Rex attacks, while armadillos roll into tight balls to shrug off coyotes. Different times, different sizes, same strategy, survive by being too tough to chew. The similarities are so strong that paleontologists often compare ankylosaur fossils to prehistoric armadillos on steroids. Of course, ankylosaurs had the extra perk of swinging their tails like wrecking balls, whereas armadillos' best move is playing dead. Still, it works. Both groups lasted millions of years. Ankylosaurs went extinct with the dinosaurs, but armadillos carry on the armored tradition. Basically, nature's tank design was so good, it built a giant version for dinosaurs and a pocket-sized version for the modern desert. Evolution loves armor, and sometimes it recycles its best ideas. Placerias and elephants, the gentle giants of their time. Before elephants stomped across Africa and Asia, the Triassic had placerias. These tusked, barrel-bodied herbivores weren't related to elephants at all. They were decinodonts, a weird side branch of mammal ancestors. But they looked and behaved uncannily like early elephants. Huge size for protection, tusks for digging and fighting, and herds grazing on plants. At around a ton in weight, Placerias was the largest herbivore of its era, the Triassic's landlord of the floodplains. They didn't have trunks, which makes them look like elephants that forgot to install a nose, but the parallels are striking. Just like elephants today, they shaped their ecosystems by trampling vegetation and digging for roots. Sadly, Placerias died out as dinosaurs rose to dominance, but elephants later filled the same role, bigger, smarter, and with that iconic trunk upgrade. You could almost say Placerius was Elephant 1.0, the beta version of the giant tusked herbivore strategy. Their resemblance shows that when ecosystems need a heavyweight gardener, evolution knows exactly what shape to reach for. Ceratopsids, rhinos, and trigodon, the horned heavyweights. What's better than one horned animal? Evolution making three different versions. In the late Cretaceous, dinosaurs like Triceratops evolved massive horns and frills, charging around like armored bulldozers. Millions of years later, mammals tried the same look. Rhinos, with single or double horns, filled grasslands with their tanky, bad-tempered bodies. And then there's Trigodon, a prehistoric South American beast often dubbed a false rhino rocking a giant nasal horn, despite being unrelated to either rhinos or ceratopsids. All three had the same stick a horn on the front and dare predators to attack strategy. Triceratops used its frill and horns for defense and display. Rhinos joust with rivals today, and Trigodon did both. The weird part? None of them are related. Horns just keep happening because they're useful. And let's face it, they look awesome. It's like nature's favorite weapon accessory, slapped onto reptiles, mammals, and everything in between. Whether it's a T-Rex, a lion, or a Jeep safari, horns make you think twice before messing around. Pachirucos and rabbits, deja vu hoppers. Millions of years before Europe and Asia gave us rabbits, South America had pachirucos. This little mammal looked and behaved almost exactly like a rabbit, Big hind legs for hopping, long ears for detecting predators, and ever-growing teeth for chewing plants. But here's the twist. Pachirucos wasn't a rabbit at all. It was a marsupial, part of a completely different family tree. Rabbits are placental mammals, closer to us than to this prehistoric hopper. Yet both evolved the same lifestyle, small, fast, and always one step ahead of predators. 
Fossils suggest Pachirucos darted around Miocene grasslands, munching leaves and hiding in burrows, rabbiting before rabbits existed. Scientists call this convergent evolution, but it's basically nature's way of saying, why reinvent the wheel? Just make another bunny. Rabbits went on to conquer almost every continent, while Pachirucos eventually vanished. Still, it proves hopping herbivores are such a good idea that evolution couldn't help but make them twice. Henidus and turtles, the pancake prototypes. When you see Henidus, your brain instantly says, turtle. Flat shell-like body, stubby flippers, slow lifestyle. It's a turtle imposter from the Triassic. Except it wasn't a turtle at all. Henidus was a placodon, a marine reptile distantly related to plesiosaurs. Instead of jaws, it had strange ridged plates in its mouth, which scientists think it used for filter feeding. So while it looked like a turtle, it behaved more like a weird reptilian vacuum cleaner. Turtles didn't evolve until later, but they ended up with almost the same body plan. Armor on top, paddle-like limbs, slow but steady swimming. The resemblance is so uncanny that Henidus fossils often confuse people into thinking turtles existed millions of years earlier than they actually did. In reality, Henidus was just evolution's test run. It's proof that the pancake with armor design is too good to pass up, so nature ran it twice, once with placodonts and once with true turtles that are still with us today. Renanids and stingrays, the flat killers. Over 380 million years ago, the seas had renanids, armored flat-bodied fish that hugged the ocean floor. With wing-like fins and broad shapes, they looked eerily like modern stingrays. But instead of smooth cartilage bodies, renanids were covered in bony plates, making them the medieval knights of the ocean floor. They weren't fast or elegant, just flat predators waiting to snap up anything that crawled past. Millions of years later, stingrays perfected the same look, ditching the armor for sleek, agile swimming and adding venomous tails for good measure. The similarity is striking. Two unrelated groups of fish, separated by hundreds of millions of years, both decided that pancake with wings was the ultimate bottom-dwelling design. Renanids may be extinct, but their strategy clearly worked, because stingrays are now thriving in oceans worldwide. Evolution clearly loves making flat, winged fish. It just needed a second draft to smooth out the kinks. Aquilolamna and manta rays, the Cretaceous kites. In 2021, paleontologists unveiled a truly bizarre shark. Aquilolamna, living 90 million years ago, it had the body of a shark but with long, flat fins stretching out like airplane wings. The result? It looked almost identical to a manta ray. Scientists believe it was a filter feeder, gliding through the seas and scooping plankton with its wide mouth. Sound familiar? Because modern manta rays do the exact same thing, except they evolved millions of years later from a completely different lineage. Aquilolamna vanished in the mass extinction that killed the dinosaurs, leaving the winged plankton eater niche empty. Eventually, manta rays stepped up and filled the role, perfecting the graceful ocean soaring lifestyle. The resemblance is so uncanny, it's like evolution recycled its old shark sketch and said, let's try this again with rays. Imagine swimming in the Cretaceous seas. You'd swear a manta was gliding overhead but it was actually a shark impersonating the role 90 million years too early. Sumenia and monkeys, the prehistoric tree pioneers. Before monkeys swung through jungles, there was Sumenia. This small Permian reptile, living 260 million years ago, was one of the first vertebrates adapted for life in trees. With long limbs, grasping hands, and a balancing tail, it clambered through branches much like modern primates do. Its teeth suggest it ate leaves, making it the prehistoric prototype of a tree-dwelling herbivore. The parallels with monkeys are uncanny. Both used grasping digits, 
both had flexible limbs and both specialized in the treetop lifestyle. But Suminia wasn't a mammal. It was a synapsid reptile, closer to the ancestors of mammals than to primates themselves. Still, it shows how early evolution was already experimenting with the tree climber blueprint. Monkeys didn't appear until over 200 million years later, but when they did, they perfected the same strategy with brains, social groups, and incredible agility. Suminia may have looked clunky compared to a monkey, but it proves the idea of tree life was so good, evolution wrote it down twice. If you've watched to this point, slam that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. This helps us to rank better in the YouTube algorithm.